Dre Smith. Thank you. Okay, here is what's going on. Hey, there's me down in the corner with my head. Okay, so here's what's going on. Since this is a junior, senior mixed class, we take our final early, and then on finals day, we just have a quiz over the last three sections that we cover. So finals will be easier as far as that day goes, but uh, you have to get ready for a final this week on Thursday. So this week, Thursday, is our semester test. Now, if you're a golfer and you're gone Thursday, then you take it next week. Okay. But for you guys, since we have some seniors, Thursday's the last day we can take it, basically. So, so we will get that done this Thursday. So we'll review today. Tomorrow, I'm gone. And so tomorrow, it'll be a practice semester test. And then Thursday's the semester test because we don't have class Wednesday. Does everybody understand what's going on? Okay. We are going to fly pretty fast today. So fast and furious, but I am recording it. So you will be able to look back at the recording if necessary. Project is due this. Um, well, seniors have to turn it in Thursday, but this Friday, I would like it done. All right, here we go. Okay, we start out first day. Coterminal angles. What's coterminal with 323? How far are they apart? 360 degrees. So this is 683, right? And if you take 323 minus 630, it's negative 37 degrees, right? We good? Okay, sounds good. 35 degree angle, you look on a union circle. What quadrant are we in? One, obviously. All right, degrees, minutes, seconds. First thing you do is change your what in, by doing what? Seconds into minutes, take 28 divided by 60. Somebody calculate or up or for far. 28 divided by 60. So you have 32.466, re, six, six, whatever, divided by 60. And then you change then minutes into degrees. So it's 25 point what, what, what degrees? Take 32.466667 divided by 60. What? Point, point five four one one. So it's 25.5411 degrees. Now we're going the other way. So you take 0.369, instead of dividing by 60, we multiply by 60. What's 0.369 times 60? 22 point, give me more decimals. 22.4, and then, what? 22.14. And then you take 0.14 times 60, and what do you get? 8.4, and that rounds to eight. And then 22 and then 10, and then you're done, okay? Degrees to radians, 270 degrees is how many radians? You just look at your unit circle and you see that it is? Three pi over two, thank you very much for answering. Okay, six pi over five. Now that's not on our unit circle. So if we convert to degrees, what do we have to multiply by? 180 over pi, the pi's cancel. 180 goes into five, 36 times, six times 36 is 216 degrees. Everybody agree with me? Okay. Which one is seven pi over four? A, B, or C? B is seven pi over four. All right, length of the intercepted arc. Well, is this a trig one or a geometry one? 
Geometry, because it's in degrees, so 72 over 360 times arc length is 2 pi r. So round to three decimal places means you put pi into your calculator. So take 72 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 95. Somebody calculate or report, please. Three decimal places. 119.381. Okay. Exact area of the sector. So you use geometry formula or trig formula? Trig formula. Area equals theta r squared over 2. So it's pi over 6 times 24 squared divided by 2. Well, 24 squared is a big number, right? Like uh, 6... 26 or something. I don't know. It's 576? Um, and then 12 goes into 576 enough times where you get like 48 pi out of this whole thing, right? Five seventy six divided by six divided by two. Forty eight five. Okay. All right, converting. Radians and radians cancel. Minutes and minutes cancel. So you're left with revolutions per hour. So 2 and 14 cancel to 7. So it's 7 times 60 or 420 divided by pi. Round to the nearest tenth. Not 1. What? 133.7. Okay. All right. Um, this one is angular velocity. Angular velocity, does it matter how long the blade is? No, it does not. So it's rotating at a rate of that many revolutions per day. We need radians per second. So 57,135 revolutions per one day times to get it into radians. How many radians are in revolution? 2 pi radians in one revolution. Revolutions canceled. Now we have revolutions per day. We want revolutions per second. How many hours are in a day? 24 hours. How many minutes in an hour? 60 minutes in an hour. How many seconds in a minute? All right. Hello. Yeah. They need to send it. They need to give it to me probably on a flash drive. Yeah, I want it today because it's Wednesday, but tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gone most of the day. Yep. All right, bye. Okay. How much? 4.15? Seems kind of small, but we'll see. Four point two for the nearest ten. We are going to attempt to. That's why I said we're going to cruise today. Forty five ish, fifty ish, I don't know. Yeah, this is the same as your test. It's worth eight percent of your grade. I don't think so. Oh negative nine, negative nine is right here. Okay. What's negative nine squared times negative nine squared? Or negative nine squared plus negative nine squared? Well, 81 plus 81 is 162. Take the square root of 162, it's square root of 81 square root of 2 or 9 square root of 2. That's our hypotenuse. Okay. So. 
to find the sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So it's negative 9 over 9 square root of 2. Nines cancel, and you can't leave square root of 2 on the bottom. So it's negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine, same thing, negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent, negative 9 divided by negative 9 is? 1. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so you take 2 over negative square root of 2. Can't leave negative square root of 2 on the bottom, so multiply top and bottom by negative square root of 2. So you get negative 2 square root of 2 over 2. 2 is canceled, so it's negative square root of 2. So if sine and cosine are the same, secant and cosecant would be the same. Cotangent would be 1. Look on your unit circle. What's the cosine at negative 7 pi over 6? Well, 7 pi over 6 is right here. So negative 7 pi over 6 would be right here, which is the same as 5 pi over 6. What's the cosine at 5 pi over 6? Very good. Negative square root of 3 over 2. Tangent of negative 4 pi over 3. Okay. 4 pi over 3 is like way down here. So a negative 4 pi over 3 would be right here where 2 pi over 3 is. What's the tangent of 2 pi over 3? Negative square root of 3. Cosine of negative 30 degrees. Well, if the cosine of 30 degrees is right here, the cosine of negative 30 degrees would be right here, which would be square root of 3 over 2. This is all unit circle stuff. And then, where is the cosine square root of 3 over 2? First quadrant, it's at how many degrees? 30 degrees. Where is the sine equal to square root of 2 over 2? Still, from a unit circle. 5 over 4, but we're looking for degrees, so it's 45 degrees. This one's a total calculator one. So you take, to find the angle, it's the inverse sine of 0.4382. What's the inverse sine of 0.4382? Round to the nearest 20, tenth. So 26.0. Okay. If this is 8 and this is 17, what's our missing side? 17 squared equals 8 squared plus what squared? Okay. Well, this is, well, I think 289. This is 64. Subtract. 225, so x must equal 15, right? So the sine of alpha is 15 over 17. Cosine of alpha is 8 over 17. Tangent of alpha is 15 over 8. Now if we go beta, opposite over hypotenuse, is 8 over 17. Cosine of beta is 15 over 17. Tangent is 8 over 15. Solving the right triangle. Um, let me just go like this, I guess. If alpha is 15 degrees and C is 28, okay? If we want beta, if this is a right triangle, what's the missing angle here? 75 degrees. To find A, A is opposite. It would be the sine of alpha equals A over 28. So the sine of 15 degrees equals A over 28. Multiply by 28. A equals 7.2. There we are. And then B, to figure out that, that's a cosine. So the cosine of 15 degrees equals A over 28. So multiply by 28. 27. There you go. Um, the sine of 5 pi over 3, again, unit circle problem. What's the sine of 5 pi over 3? So 5 pi over 3 would be all the way around to there, I think, right? And so it would be negative, oh, negative square root of 3 over 2, not negative 1 half. That's the cosine of 5 pi over 3. All right, sine of 225 degrees. 225 degrees is right there, so negative 225 degrees is right here where 135 is. Sine at 135 is negative square root of 2 over 2. All right. 
Now, that was all chapter one. One through 23 is all chapter one questions. That chapter one took us a while. Then we did the graphing ones, and I said, we're doing them on paper because I don't want to do this to them. But when you take the final, the only way to do it is this way. So is there a number in front? Is it what so the amplitude is? One. Phase shift. Are we shifting this graph anywhere? Yes. We're shifting it left pi over three. So we're shifting it a negative pi over three. And let me see how they answered it for 24. I think it's a negative pi over three. Yep, negative pi over three is how they had it. Okay, and then we have to figure out which graph it is. So the sine curve normally starts here, here, here. So if you go left pi over three, you're going that way with it, okay? Pi over three is about negative one because it's 3.14 over three, so it's about negative one. So you're shifting about one unit over every one of these. So if you're shifting one unit over, that looks like B. Everybody concur? Ooh, it could be D. I think it's D because B doesn't go quite one over. It's a little further over. It has to be D. Might have to do some zooming in on this. Okay, for this one, they ask you the period. Why? Because they put a four in front of here. How do you find the period? You put two pi divided by the period. So two pi divided by four, which is pi over two. Everything happens in pi over two here. Phase shift. Are we shifting it left or right? None. So it's zero. The range. What happens where everything goes up by how much? Three. Normally, the range is negative one to one, but we're adding three to each of these because we're shifting it up by three. So negative one plus three is two, one plus three is four. So you're looking for a graph that goes in between two and four, so you know it's not this or this, okay? And it's skinnied all the way down, okay? So there's four curves in there and cosine starts right at the top, square it up. So it has to be B, okay? It's not shifted to the right or left. This would be more of a sine curve where the middle one is right there and it goes up right away. Cosine starts by going down right away. So it has to be B. All right, solving a triangle. Okay, so how many degrees are in that? Yeah, two questions over the entire chapter, okay? And then we'd go to chapter five. Okay, how many degrees are in triangle? 180. 180 minus 76 is 104. 104 minus 66. 38 degrees. All right. So that is 38. And we use the law of sines to figure out everything else. So the sine of 66 over 14.7 equals the sine of B or sine of 676 over B. Okay, so to find B, you take 14.7 times the sine of 76 divided by the sine of 66. So when you do that on your calculator, what do you get? 15.6. To find C, it's the sine of 66 over 14.7 equals the sine of 38 over C. So 14.7 times the sine of 38 divided by the sine of 66. 9.9. Okay, .9. so if we have side, 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 what, what formula is it? Law of cosines, law of cosines here, okay? So to figure out alpha here, you take a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two B, C, cosine of alpha. So you put in the numbers. 20.8 squared equals 12.4 um, squared plus 17.5 squared minus 2 times 12.4 times 17.5. So how do we do that? Oh, cosine of alpha. So how do we do this? Well, we take this squared 
minus this squared minus this squared divided by these in a bracket. Okay? You do all that and then take the inverse cosine of the answer. So what do you get for angle A alpha? Inverse cosine of the answer. Eighty six point four and then you can do the same thing for B. So put B alone on one side. So then twelve point four squared equals twenty point eight squared plus seventeen point five squared minus 2 times 20.8 times 17.5 cosine of beta. And you get something like 36.5. And once you get that one, you just take these two, add them up, and subtract them from 180. <coughs> this is 122.9. So this is, should be 57.1. Something like that, right? All right. Here we have side angle side, so it's 7, 9, and 97.7. Okay, but still law of cosines. So b squared equals 7 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 7 times 9 cosine of 97.7. Okay, so b squared equals whatever this is all multiplied out. And then you take the square root of that answer. Okay? So 7 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 7 times 9 cosine of 97.7. What do you get? 12.1. Okay? And once you get that, then you can use the law of sines to figure out this angle. The sine of 97.7 over 12.1 equals a sine of um, sine of um, gamma over 9. So it's 9 times the sine of 97.7 divided by 12.1. And then whatever you get, take the inverse sine of that answer. 47.5. So round one decimal, 47.5. And then 97.7. 47.5, they add up to 145.2, so it would be 34.8 for that one. Heron's formula. So S equals A plus B plus C divided by 2, right? So 17 and 10 is 27, and 24 is 51 over 2, which equals 25.5. So the area equals the square root of 25.5 times 25.5 minus 17, which is 8.5. 25.5 times minus 10 is 15.5. 25.5 minus 24 is 1.5. So if you multiply all these together, Take the square root of that answer, you get the area of that triangle. And what is the area of that triangle? Round to the nearest tenth. Seventy-one point what? All right. Um, Heron's formula. 
Um, yes, it is on the board. Okay. If you have a side angle side situation, it's one half AB sine of C or sine of Y. So A equals one half nine times seven times the sine of 59. Okay. So whatever that is. What? Point. Is exactly 27.00. Right. Wow. 0076. So it'd be 27.01, right? 00076. Okay. Wow. Cool. All right. A. A is um, 1, 3. B is. 4, 1. So if we add them together, A plus B is 5, 4. It should end at 5, 4. A minus B um, should be at negative 3, 2. So 5, 4 is this one. Negative 3, 2 would be this one. Okay. Direction and magnitude. Magnitude is the square root of 1 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is 1 plus 9 or the square root of 10. To find the angle, it's the inverse tangent of y over x. So take the inverse tangent of, and use the absolute value here. So it's the inverse tangent of 3. What's the inverse tangent of 3? That's the reference angle. So if we are 1, negative 3, we're in quadrant 4. So it's 71.565 down from 360. So you take 360 minus 71.6. And I don't know what that is. 288.4. Then my most favoritist problem of all time, the donkey problem. All right. So 25 degrees here makes it 155 degrees here. This 70 gets transferred here. We're looking for X because for every force going this way, there's an equal and opposite force of the donkey pulling back this way. So this is the law of cosines. So... X squared is equal to 60 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 60 times 70 cosine of 155. So once you do all the math and then you take the square root, it should be about 126-ish, somewhere in there. One twenty six point nine. Okay. All right. And then identities. Remember that this whole last chapter three stuff, if we would have done it on computer, it would have looked like this. Okay. What is secant the same as? One over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. So we multiply both the top and bottom by cosine. Those cancel, those cancel. So it's 1 over sine. What's 1 over sine? Same as cosecant. There we go. Tangent times cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Times cosine. Cosines cancel. You get sine. Multiply. Sine times sine is sine squared. Outers is sine cotangent. Inners is minus sine cotangent. They cancel. Cotangent times cotangent is so it's choice A. Okay, this one. Okay. What uh, matches identity? Well, you get sine over cosine plus cosine over cosine if you split it up. Sine over cosine is tangent. Cosine over cosine is 1. Hey, it matches that one. All right. So, we have various blanks here. Okay, cotangent is the same as 1 over 
tangent. And then a tangent here, and tangent here cancels. Well, I guess you need to write out a tangent like you factored it out of the tangent cube so they don't cancel yet. So it's one over tangent, and then you factor out a tangent, and then the tangent's canceled, so it's one plus tangent squared, which is secant squared. Okay, so um, this one would be, how do you get the cosine of 17 pi over 12? Well, from your note card, that's the cosine of like three pi over 12 plus 14 pi over 12, which is the cosine of pi over four plus seven pi over six, which is the cosine of pi over four, cosine of seven pi over six, minus the sine of pi over four, sine seven pi over six. So cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two. Cosine of seven pi over six is negative square root of three over two. Sine of pi over four square root of two over two. Sine of seven pi over six is negative one half. So it's negative square root of six plus the square root of two all over four. Okay. And last one. Negative 13 pi over 12 is like um, the sine of 3 pi over 12 minus 3 minus what? 3 minus 16 is negative 13, right? So it's the sine of pi over 4 minus uh, 8, 4 goes into each, so it's 4 pi over 3. So it's sine of pi over 4 cosine of 4 pi over 3 plus cosine of pi over 4 sine 4 pi over 3. So this is square root 2 over 2 and then 1 half plus square root 2 over 2 negative square root of 3 over 2. So it's square root 2 minus square root of 6 all over 4, which is C. Those are the 40 questions on your semester test. So, that's what you need to know for Thursday in here. So tomorrow, like I said, I will be gone. I'm going to put out a sample semester test for you. Okay? So, that is what's going on. So you can use the rest of the time today to work on your semester project you can work on it tomorrow if you have extra time no class wednesday thursday semester project i would like done and handed in semester test is thursday if you don't get done thursday in class if you don't get done thursday in class juniors you can take it friday seniors you come in with the juniors at this time and take it friday as well okay so you'll have to come in friday if you don't get it done thursday Okay, there we go.